From right here in the city of brotherly love, and of course, Tom Bell produced many great artists, including the Spinners, the Stylistics, and tonight's honored guest, the Delphonics. And tonight is a very special tribute to William Puji Hart, the lead singer and songwriter of the Delphonics, one of the driving forces behind the Philadelphia sound that defying the 1960s and 70s soul and pop music. And he passed away a Thursday, July the 14th at the age of 77. One of the most influential and distinguished first tenors in American popular music, Mr. Hart's vocals and lyrics fueled some of pop and soul music's biggest hits, including La La Means I Love You, Didn't I Blow Your Mind This Time, and ready or not, here I come, you can't hide from love. And so many other great classics. I mean, what a great, great, great group. And uh, William Hart and the Delphonics, their sound together, inspired many artists, including Michael Jackson, the Jackson Five, and Prince. And as a singer, songwriting, musician, and humanitarian, William Hart and the Delphonics were inducted into the R&B Hall of Fame in 2014. And he was known for his great big heart, um, giving opportunities for aspiring performers and entertainers um, at his annual summer talent shows. And he always gave back to the community. That's one of the things we want to mention tonight when we talk about William Hart. You all know him through his music, but he was definitely one of the great humanitarians. Um, Definitely uh, gave support through various charitable organizations, including helping us uh, many many years ago to establish the first ever Damon Harris Cancer Foundation Benefit Gala in support of former Temptations member Damon Harris. And the Damon Harris is the high tenor that you hear on Papa Was a Rolling Stone. He does that Hey Mama part, and he's a successor to Eddie Kendricks. Now, when he was stricken with the illness, um, our organization got together and put on this uh, fundraiser and got quite a bit of notoriety and that was thanks to the support of William Hart and the Delphonics. That was the most memorable event. Now, that was 2001 uh, over across the bridge in South Jersey. There's a young man on the line. Uh, Jeff Wyman, are you here with us tonight? Hey, how you doing, Tim? It's a pleasure to be here with you. What's going on, Jam and Jeff? Now, you're a DJ. You're also in the Philadelphia uh, area, and uh, you've been DJing for quite some time. You're the son of Jake Wyman, who also worked with uh, the one and only Mr. High Lit. Am I correct? That is correct, sir. So anyway, um, we got you on the line. Now, Jeff Wyman was also one of the DJs that was with us. He was the DJ for this particular event that we did for the Damon Harris Cancer Foundation. I want to shed some light and, and tell people about this uh, this uh, event that we had. It was, I guess it's over 20 years ago. It's hard to believe that it was that long ago, isn't it? Oh, I'm telling you. I, it, it takes me back uh, just, just to see Damon Harris and William Hart in the same place together. That was like one of the biggest honors for me I could have ever, ever had it bestowed in my life, really, to be honest with you. Well, what, Jeff, when we talk about this event, I mean, this, like we said, this was a 2001, many years ago. And uh, we were just actually, one, one thing about William Hart, he always helped those just getting started. This was one of our first promotions that we did together. And uh, he was there, right there, to support us with this event. The Delphonics came down and performed. Miss Marilyn Marshall performed, R&B jazz recording artist. And then Damon Harris also put in a performance. But it was not just like going to a concert. It was just an, an event. People flew in from Canada, <laughs> across different parts of the country, just to be up close and personal uh, with these legends at the time, and then to help support this foundation. Let's talk a little bit about that event. And how, how, did, it, how did it feel to be part of that? Well, it was. I felt very honored to be part of it because uh, we're, we're talking about two legends here that I personally admired growing up as a young kid, especially uh, William Hart of the Delphonics, uh, not not just Damon Harris, but William Hart too, because I was a huge Delphonics fan right from the age of uh, very early on up. Mm-hmm. And, and as as well as I was, and of course, you know, we talk about the influence that William Hart had on generations of recording artists. You know, the Fuji. There's so many. Art, we can be going on and on and on and list the R and B, the pop, and the hip hop artists that were influenced by that sound of the Delphonics. Talking about William Hart, his brother Will Hart, and Randy came and later Major Harris, and the music they put out was so influential. To now, if you listen to Bruno Mars today. And listen to Silk Sonic. You hear a lot of the Delphonics in that 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 music, those melodies, the way they're they're singing, and the, and the class that the Delphonics have when they perform. You see that in, in acts like that. Now it's 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 
it's uh, sad that there's not enough uh, acts out there now, but hopefully that we will see some in the future who actually uh, take what they learn from these legends and just and, and carry this tradition on. Um, that was the foundation was laid down by artists like the Delphonics and those like them. Oh yeah, most definitely because um, it just seemed like it seems like that music is slowly making its way back into uh, the present again because you know everybody's just missing missing that so much through the years and uh, groups like the Delphonics and the Temptations and the Spinners and many others are great influential groups that really really. Uh, carry a tradition even to even for today for young artists mm-hmm. and you know vinyl's even making a comeback now which is surprising i'm going to record stores now they're charging uh, a heck of a lot of money for these like 37 38 dollars for a vinyl album i'm like wow i got a lot of this stuff stored at home in my, you know in, in my home i can hardly walk i got so many albums <laughs> 12 inches but it's it, making a it's comeback funny you, you know? say that too mm-hmm. because i walked into a store and i saw an off the wall album which i have about five copies of mm-hmm. that i bought for eight dollars a piece back in the day now you got to pay 25 dollars <laughs> for it <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> that's unbelievable you know but at least you know they're trying we got to give we got to give credit where credit is due i mean like there aren't in this there aren't many record stores out there though you know we used to have sound of market in philadelphia Pat's music. I mean, all these places. Tower Records over in South Shively, Shively, you know, uh, all is of them. You know, they, some... you know, these, these. It's, it's just amazing how it's just making such a comeback with vinyl. Mm-hmm. And if, if if only they would just start reprinting a lot of those albums like that we missed. Mm-hmm. You know, from back in the day. You know, all them Delphonics, all them Temptations albums. I would just love to see them mm-hmm. reprinted again. But you don't seem to. They don't seem to like take a lot of care in the music industry for something like that well, anymore. That's, that's where guys like you know myself and you and some of the you know the the DJs that are still doing it. There aren't very many that are still doing it. You know Jerry Blav, the is still doing it, and there's a few, but there aren't very many that are doing it. Uh, you know, doing it to keeping the sound alive. We you know Ollie Hackett on our station is he's keeping the sound alive, but there's just too few. We need more. You know, and I'm guys like you. You know, um, in your part of town, that you're you're keeping that sound alive. So we appreciate what you do as well. Oh, no problem. I I mean, uh, I mean, on my my internet station that I'm on on Famous Fifty Six Boss Radio dot com, I'm very big with playing vinyl on my show because it's it's just, it's just a very traditional thing, and a lot of the music that I do play on my show is all like that stuff that we've been talking about here, all that great soul and R and B. Uh, all that great legends from the past and, you know, and just keeping them alive. I mean, it's not a lot of hard work to do, but you know what? I enjoy doing every bit of it. We're expecting to actually hear from uh, Lamont Showboat Robinson. Remember going to the R&B Hall of Fame uh, some years ago? Well, we're expecting yes, to hear yes, from that him. Was a, that was a great time. That was an excellent time. We're going to hear from him shortly, hopefully on the show here tonight. He should be calling in a little later. And we're talking about the Dell Phonics. Now, Talk about some of your favorite Delphonics tunes. I mean, think about that sound. We talk about how influential they are, you know, influencing New Kids on the Block, influencing Prince, influencing Michael Jackson, who have all covered Delphonics tunes, and not to mention the list of rappers. But they have a very specific sound. I mean, you have that beautiful, outstanding first tenor of William Hart. You have his brother, Will Hart, who has his own distinctive sound, and then Randy Kane. And that harmony is very, it's very different. Nobody sounds like the Delphonics. Oh, yeah. Well, there, there was a lot of groups that were inspired by the Delphonics. I mean, you have uh, Black Ivory, The Moments, and many others. But the Blue Delphonics Magic. were really, mm-hmm. the, really the, the forerunners mm-hmm. of all that. Mm-hmm. That sound, you know, and, and their class. Yeah, that, that sound that, that you know, the... The, the Philadelphia Sound, you know, the Sigma Sound Studios, the MFSB band, they just really had it together. And with Tom Bell at the helm producing and writing and, you know, and, and the band, the MFSB band mm. doing their musical mm. part, and it just Earl Young really also, came together you know, really good. Earl Young from the Tramps who did play in a lot of those sessions, too. So that's a great thing. Then they were cam- Before that, they were with Cameo Parkway Records. You have a favorite. We have a couple of things here. Um, any favorites from the yeah. Delphonics? I, I actually have a couple of favorites. Uh, 
two of my favorites were two of their earliest recordings that they did before they got onto the Philly Groove label. Uh, one of them was called He Don't Really Love You, and another one was called You've Been Untrue. I love them songs. And, and Alfie was another favorite of mine, the Burt Bacharach composition. You can actually really hear the voice of William Hart. But these early classics, man, I really love this Oh, song. yeah. And no one's playing them. You hardly hear them. But, you know, we got them here. And uh, we're going to go ahead and play one for you. How about He Don't Really Love You on the Cameo Parkway record label? Oh, yeah. I certainly like to mention the fact also that one of my favorite all-time Delphonics albums that I grew up from a young kid was Alive and Kicking. And okay. It featured Major Harris in the group at the time with uh, Will Hart and, and uh, Fuji. And I'll tell you, you know, no, nothing will ever compare to that sound. Nothing, mm -hmm. ever. Nope. Nope, that's an original sound. They're originals. You know, you have a lot of people to try to emulate them, but no one sounds like the Delphonics. And we're going to feature a great track. And, Jeff, I want to thank you for taking the time to call into the show tonight. And I wish you much success with your own radio show because you're doing it, too. You know, and we appreciate what you do and, and much success to you, too. And, you know, I'm glad we had a chance to talk about that, that benefit with the Damon Harris Cancer Foundation. Because that was definitely a highlight. Um, when I think of William Hart, that's the first thing I go back to. Now, we've had a chance to interview him on the show on numerous occasions, both him and his brother, Will Hart, on our radio show, our South Jersey show, and then here on in Philly, in Philly as well. And um, I tell you, we're really going to miss one of those all-time great voices, but we're going to continue to keep his legacy alive. And uh, we thank you for phoning in, man. I, I thank you for having me. I, it was an absolute honor and a pleasure, and uh, hopefully we can do this again soon. Talking about the Delphonics, the Superphonic Delphonics on the R&B Showcase, coming at you live from the heart and soul of Philadelphia. We have a very special guest on the line. He is the founder of the R&B Music Hall of Fame. We're honored to have with us Lamont Showboat Robinson. Good evening, Lamont. Good evening. Good evening, Tim. How you doing, man? I'm doing fantastic. What about yourself? I'm doing well. It's good to hear your voice. It's been a while since we talked, but I'm glad we got you here. And is this, yes, is this your first time on our on our show here in Philadelphia? Have you been on this, this broadcast before? I don't think I've been on the one since you've been in Philadelphia. But right. you know, we were on the other stage, and I, you know, I was on you know quite frequently. Uh, absolutely, we go back years. <laughs> but uh, <laughs> it's, it's good to have you, man. I mean, tonight, you know, it's, it's good to be here. Good to be here. Special night. We're honoring William Pooji Hart, lead singer and songwriter of the Delphonics, and himself, along with his brother Will Hart, Randy Kane, and Major Harris, made some great music in the 60s and 70s. Some of the best music that helped define the sound of Philadelphia. Uh, one of those golden tenor voices, a very distinct. I mean, you know, one thing about the classic artists, especially artists like William Hart, is when you hear their voice, they're instantly recognizable. And you know it's them. You know William Hart. You know the Delphonics when you hear their music. Well, you know what? That's that's how it was back then. You know, you uh, you could tell by the sound. You know, uh, the Delphonics didn't sound like the OJs. The OJs didn't sound like the Temptations. And uh, those guys worked very, very hard on their craft. But first, let me say my condolence out to the Hart family. Uh, um, I was just stunned when I heard about it. I guess it was on Thursday. And, um, you know, I was quite shocked. I got a chance to meet him about eight years ago, and we developed a relationship. And uh, he is truly, truly going to be messing. He's one of the greatest falsettos ever. You know, around that time, um, when they came out, you had uh, them, the stylistics, and uh, the dramatics with Ron Banks, and all those guys had distinctive uh, tenors, and uh, just great. But uh, it's going to be a loss. Uh, with him, he was just a great guy. Uh, would stay on the phone to talk with you. He would answer questions. Um, uh, didn't have an air about himself. I know when we inducted them in 214, the second class, down in Canton, it was uh, myself, him, Gene Chandler, um, Joe Jackson, Michael Jackson's dad, and uh, just some of the stories that um, they were talking about. I got privileged to be there. To listen, but uh, he was just just a nice guy, super super guy, and uh, he's definitely going to be missed. Yeah, no question about it. And that was I know I know that was a significant event. I mean, your induction. How many inductions have you had so far, uh, Lamont? Well, well, we we have had uh, 
10 all together, round 10 all together. Uh, the last two have been possibly because of the COVID. Uh, and we're probably going to cancel this year's as well. And then we're coming back in uh, 223. Uh, we have found a location. Uh, we're going to have a groundbreaking in September. I just can't give out the location of where, but I would love to come back on the show again to announce it. Uh, it'll be out from the first week of August in a few weeks, but, uh, you know, Pooja is part of that, uh, as we call it, um, of this um, Hall of Fame is going to be built. And this is the reason why, you know, they should be in the Rock and Roll Hall of Fame, without a doubt. No question about uh, it. With, you know, with all the hits. But I'm glad we got them in the National Rhythm and Blues Hall of Fame. I know the Rhythm and Blues Foundation uh, honored them. I know the, I guess, the R&B yeah, there's a group up there in Atlantic City. The society, yeah. That they're on. Yes, mm-hmm. society, yes. Mm-hmm. They do a great job. Yes, they they, uh, they honor them as well. Mm-hmm. And then they deserve to be honored. All the accolades. That's both and William Hart. Now, what, the Delphonics were inducted into the Hall of Fame. Is that correct? Entire group. Yes, sir. Yes, it was William yes, Hart. The whole group. Yeah, Bill he just Hart. Came in. That was Randy Cam. Yeah. yeah. That was 2014 in Canton, Ohio, home mm-hmm. of the Pro Football mm-hmm. Hall of Fame. And again, like I said, he just. Spent a lot of time with me, and we spoke. And uh, very, very bright guy, man. I mean, he could talk on any any level, any subject, uh, finance, uh, the music industry, love music. Uh, and people don't know he was a hell of a uh, um, guitar player, you know. Um, he was great. He was a musician. They played, he played a piano, too. He was a musician, yeah. A lot of yeah, different, different instruments. People hear him know him as a singer, but he's a very good musician and songwriter. And he wrote for a lot of other folks. And uh, then he had a solo hit of Here's to Meet You. We'll probably play it a little later on. And that was uh, big in Philadelphia as well. And um, like, and he's also, we talked about this earlier in the show, he always opened up his heart. He used to have this, uh, this event at his home where he would l- allow all of the up-and-coming uh, artists to perform and get exposure at uh, a lot of his events that he had. He always gave back to the community. And then we mentioned earlier about the Damon Harris Cancer Foundation. He was one of the... Uh, ones that helped support that foundation. Him and the Delphonics came down and performed and supported the event and helped me. I was a young promoter at that time, just getting into the game of uh, promotion and music and concerts, and uh, Will Hart was very supportive of that. William Hart, both the brothers actually, have supported our events, but William came down with the Delphonics, mentioned that a little earlier in the show, and uh, su- supported Damon Harris's uh, Cancer Foundation. Oh, man, he was, he was a true legend. And true, true I remember um, I seen him on the show with the dramatics and those guys were truly brothers, man. You know, him and Ron and, um, stylistics, uh, Russell, you know, it wasn't aware with those guys, you know, those guys loved each other and they helped each other. And that's what we're missing today, um, from the music business and industry. You know, those guys would stay around for each other to go on and so they wouldn't leave, you know, that they believe, you know, they don't even watch the other shows, you know? And, um, William was just just a student, even after he got big, you know, he was just just a student of the game, man. And, you know, um, I, I'm glad I got a chance to be able to sit down and talk with him over the years that, that I got a chance after we inducted him. And uh was no air about him. You know, I said, look, I'd love to bring you in. He said, brother, just tell me where you want me to be. He said, uh, let me know. And uh, just one of the nicest guys outside of being a hell of a singer. No question about it. I mean, you were talking about how the camaraderie uh, with the artists. I remember when he got together with Blue Magic and also with the Stylistics lead singer Russell Tompkins Jr. And the three of them had an album called The Three Tenors and Soul Music and and put that out. And that was a great project. So, you know, it's a camaraderie, very supportive. I think the Delphonics were also instrumental in uh, members of the Delphonics with supporting Blue Magic and getting them out there as well and, and being influential to that group. Absolutely. Absolutely. You know, you know, one other thing that we can't talk enough about him is his unique sound. He didn't sound like anybody else. Yes, that's true. Nobody sounds like William Hart. Nobody. You know, his tenor was just so pretty and so round and sweet. You know, he didn't sound like Eddie Kendricks. Right. You know, he had his own sound, you know, and his sound was unique. You know, even though Eddie opened up the door for all those young guys, mm-hmm. uh, William had his own sound. And, and, and the way he would project it, that tenor. Very and distinctive his sound. And everybody else, it was, just, it was just like a hand and glove, you know. One thing I got to say about Philadelphia, you know, you guys know how to really develop three-man groups. You know, you know the OJs were up there, even though 
we claim them as well here in Cleveland. Um, you know, they got their real big start there in Philadelphia. You know, when you see those three man groups like them and the Delphonic the moments also they sound yeah. like mm-hmm. they sound like the Temptations. You yeah. know, the that full there. sound, but it's only three of them. Mm-hmm. You know, it's, it must be in the water up there. In Philadelphia. I'm going to play for you the Mata solo track. Here's to you. From William Hart. Now his his speaking voice is actually baritone, which is amazing. It's a very unique voice, very unique sound. And um, I'm going to play one of his tracks. It was a hit here in Philadelphia, and it's called "Here's to You" from the great tenor, Mr. William Hart. Solo track right there that is called "Here's to You" on the R&B Showcase. Here's to you, William Pooji Hart. We appreciate what uh, this great artist has given to the world of music. And on the line, my special guest is Lamont Showboat Robinson. Lamont is the founder of the R&B Hall of Fame. If you're just tuning in, of course, uh, the group was inducted. Now, what year was that again they were inducted, uh, Lamont? That was in 2014. It was the second class. They went in with uh, Whitney Houston. And, wow. Uh, I, don't, I, don't, I don't have the, uh, Gene Chandler. Mm-hmm. Um, just, just, just a host of. Superstar. Matter of fact, in my office every day, I look at this picture of him holding his gold record, and uh, you know, just can be enough said about him mm-hmm. and the group as well. Mm-hmm. You know, they had over twenty twenty um, records that uh, charted. Mm-hmm. You know, about half of them were in the top ten. So, mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Um, I'm looking for them one day to be in the hall, and I wish he could have been there, but I think it will happen because their music cross. Mm-hmm. You know, we, you know, we don't talk about that. That music crossed, and you know, from the Jacksons to Missy Elliott has, has all copied their music or sampled mm-hmm. their music. Mm-hmm. Prince, New Kids on the Block, a lot of artists, you know, and 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 they did. Oh, yeah. There's La La was covered. Did not blow you. I mean, you had so many artists that have uh, covered their music, and uh, Hey Love, yeah. and you know the things that Will Hart also led on were covered, and you know, it's it's uh, you know, we're gonna miss. William Poochie Hart, but you know what? Like I said, we're going to continue to pass his music on to, to generations of recording artists. And even with my, you know, as when I am not on the air on the radio, I'm also an educator in South Jersey. And we're actually, I think I'm going to, I'm going to send you a, a video clip where we have the kids are actually paying tribute to a lot of the great artists. And we're doing something on the Motown sound right now. So we're trying our best oh, to pass it on. Interesting. That should be really interesting. To pass it on to the next generation. We have them reenacting some scenes, like the artist development scene at Motown. And, uh, you know, it's just an effort to, to, to pass this music on. The kids are really excited, you know. And a lot of times the kids are just not, at, they, you know, with the kids, why don't they recognize it? A lot of them are not exposed to it. They're not, they just listen to their music. But we got to take the time and, and play this stuff. And a lot of the kids, you know, you'd be surprised uh, that they go back. And when they hear a lot of the, the new versions, they want to know, you know, who did the original. When they hear the original, wow, I like the new well, version, but I like this original a little better, you know? <laughs> well, well, you know, one thing I can do to piggyback on that is mm-hmm. that if you go over to the U.K., mm-hmm. all those kids know these know the sound. Mm-hmm. They know the sounds of the 60s. Mm-hmm. Um, the classic soul, R&B. Um, we got to do a better job in educating our youth and the young people about this music, mm-hmm. where it comes from, you know, rhythm and blues. The reason why I've been an advocate at really promoting this and, and, and getting them a, 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 a permanent home is because if it wasn't for rhythm and blues music, we know we would know music as we do today. Mm-hmm. You know, um, so many other genres have taken from and sampled this music. And, you know, we want to call it old school music. No, I call it classic soul, Mm -hmm. classic rhythm and blues, because Mm -hmm. it's just timeless. You know, you could put on um, one of my father-in-law's records, uh, David Ruffin and Temptation, Mm -hmm. and it sounds like yesterday. You Mm -hmm. know, put on Girl, Why You Want to Make Me Blue, or Mm -hmm. My Girl. You know, the sound is there. If you can run down the stacks, down the the sound is still there, still full. Um, and then going up to the 70s um, and, and 80s with this sound, you know, still sounds good. Good, mm-hmm. good music. Mm-hmm. Good music. So I'm working on uh, a number of things as well as other people are to keep this music alive. But uh, one thing that I like to say, this music doesn't have any color to it. Mm-hmm. You know, it it's doesn't have any color. Mm-hmm. And I, I just want people to know that we got to do a better job at educating 
our youth, and we need to go and support these artists mm -hmm. that Thank are still mm -hmm. touring mm -hmm. like other nationalities do mm -hmm. for their, their artists. Right. Well, well, you know, let's we, pack it out. Um, I, and, I, and I saw Will Hart, you know, at, at a concert uh, a few months back. It might have been, I think it was a Father's Day show, I believe. And they were fan. I mean, they were excellent. The showmanship, the performance, um, the, the the choreography, the harmonies. They sound exactly like the, the you know they are the Delphonics, but they you know because you have an original member. But they you know it's just like the taking us back in the day, performance wise, the class that they had. And I s sincerely hope that um, these acts, all the acts, attempts, whoever's out there, just continue doing what you do. You don't have to stop. Continue doing it because it's important that, as you said, Lamont, we pass this down to the next generation. And that, and we do it through the performances, attending the concerts, buying tickets, and going to support the shows. Why not? Well, you know, the other thing is that not to take away from what these artists are doing today, the Bruno Mars and uh, mm -hmm. some of the other acts that right. come up underneath the umbrella of rhythm and blues, R&B. I don't want the youth of today and the people think it started Right there, right. Uh, you, know, long, you know, we got a long, you know, we got a long history mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. of this. And, and you know, one of the other things that you said is just so important is that the Delphonics never changed their style in terms of what they look like mm -hmm. on and off mm -hmm. the stage, the way they dress. Mm -hmm. That goes for the Temps. That goes for the OJs. Mm -hmm. You know, I see guys now wearing sneakers with the suits. <laughs> you, you wouldn't dare see that on a James Brown show. Mm -hmm. Or Jackie Wilson, mm -hmm. you get fined. We got to stay with the standard. <laughs> yes. Okay. I'm mm -hmm. not. You know. I'm mm -hmm. not trying to. That's you know, right. make light or anything. And I'm just telling the truth. You are. You know. Um, that's how those groups got to where they are. That's the reason why they're Hall of Famers is because from the beginning to the end. You know, look at the Dales. You know, um, they just end up passing on, but they always look spectacular on stage. Mm -hmm. uh, my dear friend, Mary Wilson, who passed oh, God bless um, mm -hmm. almost about a year ago, yeah. I'd never seen her not dress. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Okay? Never seen her not. Aretha Franklin was another one. Mm -hmm. Never seen her not dress. We got to get back to that. These artists that's coming up today, if you want to be in the line with these greats, mm -hmm. you know, you have to do the whole package. Mm -hmm. You know, the OJs are on their last mm -hmm. tour, and you best believe Mm -hmm. Eddie Walt and Bingy going to be dressed. Mm -hmm. Well, you mentioned Bruno Mars. He has a group out now called Silk Sonic with Anderson Pack, and they're actually emulating and, and bringing, trying to bring that style of dress back. They're on stage, they're singing, they got the harmony, they got the choreography, and they have the, the, the attire. So that's one group. There's one out there, but we need more. You know, we had Joe to see back in the day. We had Boys to Men. We don't have enough. I'd like to see a few more vocal groups out there, too, too, and, and have that uh, uh, yeah, harmony. Yeah, absolutely. You know, like New new Edition still dress. Right. Um, yeah. uh, and and uh, my head goes off to Bobby Brown and getting mm -hmm. back, and mm -hmm. they just had a great tour. Charlie Wilson is still mm -hmm. one of the masters out there today. So we still have a few. We just have to, one, I would like to see a tenor and a bass singer come back. Mm -hmm. You know, mm -hmm. um, nothing sounds any better than that three, four, five-part harmony. Mm -hmm. In these groups, you know, and uh, when they just stand on the street corner, you know, Lord Anthony, you know, I've gotten a chance since I've been in this this uh, this business to really hear how these guys started off. And you know, if you look at Unsung, who's to tell you from the beginning to the end how he got to where he was at? You know, he was a student of the game. He mm -hmm. was a student, yep. and uh, he covered all the bases, and that's the reason why his name will live on forever. Mm -hmm. No question about it. And uh, well, Lamont, listen, I thank you. We can go on and on and talk about the. the uh, we could, we could climate, tomorrow. But yeah. yeah, you know, we could. And um, but we want to continue to do this. We're going to be have you back on for some other things as well. Much continued success, and you know, I like about you, Lamont, is you keep on doing your thing. You know, you don't let anything stop you or deter you. You have a goal in mind that you want to do, and you're sticking to it. And I, I applaud you for that, and especially for you know recognizing. Uh, these legends. And one thing I like about your foundation, you also, you know, you do the, the artists, you do the people, the radio hosts, you do journalists, uh, you do, you know, venue owners of some of the classic venues that, that the artists performed at. You have a whole gambit. You actually cover the whole culture of R&B and soul music. And I think that is just a great thing. Well, I thank you for those kind words. And, 
you know, anytime you want me, all you got to do is just call me, email me, whatever, and I'm there. But uh, uh, thanks for having me. Uh, again, my condolence goes out to the family. Much love to your audience and, and the sound of Philadelphia. I'd like to say hello to Kenny Gamble and Chuck Gamble, a dear friends of mine. And, uh, hey, man, I'm here, man, and uh, let's keep the music going. Thanks, thanks, Lamont. I appreciate you calling in, and we'll talk to you soon. Thank you. God bless. Have a great evening. William Hart was influential to a lot of uh, great artists. And, uh, you know, he wrote a lot of songs for a lot of folks, and they cover a lot of his tunes. And that's just a testament of the talent of this great gentleman, the musician, a songwriter, a great lead singer for one of the greatest groups in American music history, that sound. We talked with Lamont Shilbert Robinson earlier about that distinctive sound of the Delphonics that they had. We talked with the radio host Jeff Wyman a little earlier. Now we have another special guest who used to host a show called The Soulful Shack on uh, 89.7 WGLS FM. And he works in television and uh, he's doing all kind of, I'm going to let him tell what he does. Uh, Freddie C., you're there. Yeah, good evening, Tim. How are you? How you doing, fabulous, Freddie C.? Now, you've been changed TV stations so many times, I can't keep up where you're at now. Where you at, bro? <laughs> I know you're out of the state. I am, uh, I'm alive and well, living the dream here in uh, beautiful Tampa, Florida now. I work for the uh, Spectrum uh, station here, Spectrum Bay News 9, uh, one of the Spectrum Network's uh, news channels. And I've uh, been here down here, it's going on eight years now. So it's uh, it's been a great gig for me. It was a good move uh, coming south here. But I'm, I miss Philly. I miss my friends in Philly and Jersey and Shout out to all my uh, my family and friends listening up there tonight. Mm-hmm. Got to shout out Eddie C, your brother, because he tunes into the show quite a bit. And last week I said, hey, I'd send out, I said, I'm going to send a shout out to Freddie C. And it was Eddie C that, that, that <laughs> well, we, I, got, <laughs> yeah. I got it straight. <laughs> That's right. But it's 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 really good to hear from your brother. Like I said, you, you, you work in radio yourself. You work in the business. And you remember also, like myself, we all just enjoy this good music. You know, we enjoy supporting each other. And I'm glad that you took the time to call in. Uh, to the radio show. Can you remember growing up in the Philadelphia area, listening to the radio and hearing groups like the Delphonics on the air? And what was it like for you? You know, I, I was thinking about that when uh, you were talking to, to Jeff and, and the mind here. Uh, we were so fortunate, you and I, Tim, mm-hmm. to grow up in the area that we did, in the area that we did, because mm-hmm. there was just so much great music coming mm-hmm. from the uh, Philadelphia area mm-hmm. at that time. Um, you know, from the, the intruders, the Delphonics, of course, and the seventies with the OJs and the, uh, how Norman the blue nose and funny sick. I mean, you can go on and on. And, you know, we were on the ground floor for it, man. I mean, they, these songs were breaking Philadelphia. Mm-hmm. They say in radio, break, you know, that's when they really start playing them. Mm-hmm. Um, you know, they would be on the radio in Philly before anywhere else in the world. Mm-hmm. And we were right on the ground floor of it. Mm-hmm. So we heard these songs before, you know, everyone else in the world did. So we, we were hearing La La Means I Love You weeks, mm-hmm. you know, months sometimes mm-hmm. before uh, before the rest of the world. Mm-hmm. La La Means I Love You came out smoking. Uh, that was mm-hmm. uh, the, the first really big hit that the Delphonics mm-hmm. had. And, you know, I'm a collector, so I'm like, uh, the, one, of my, one of my bucket list collections is, uh, when they started the Philly Groove label, mm-hmm. um, it was a regional label at first. It was picked mm-hmm. up by uh, the Bell Label Group for national distribution. But, you know, when the first song first came out in early 1968, um, it was only released locally. And it was released, if, you, if you're familiar with the Philly Groove label, it was mm-hmm. mostly red. They had some blue and, and silver variations. Mm-hmm. The uh, green label was the, the locally produced one. And uh, if, if you own a copy of that... Um, yeah, <laughs> get yourself an armed guard. Mm-hmm, it's mm-hmm. worth a lot of money, and yeah. uh, that's, that's, that was when I saw that. Mm-hmm. But yeah, getting back to the, the sounds, I mean, well, you talk. For, you have, you just, have quite a collection yourself of, of, of records of forty. Oh yeah, I mean, I've seen, that, I've seen your collection. You know, <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. So yeah, but they were they were they were great. I um, remember just um, you know the, the, the there was a lot of the same musicians and producers and all, and they were, you know, working with a lot of the same groups. But each group, I think, and Lamont touched on this too, each group had their own sound, you know? I mean, you mm-hmm. could tell, you knew it was the Delphonics. The minute, minute you heard Will Hart's voice, you know, uh, or the minute you heard, you know, um, uh, Eddie LaVert from the OJs, you know, they, they were just so unique. Each group had their own unique sound. Um, and Will Hart's falsetto, man, it was just, he was just so... It was not only his falsetto; it was the way he presented it, the way his, his uh, phrasing was. I mean, that mm-hmm. was just so unique, and I mean, it, it worked so well. 
uh, with with all those songs. And you know, I mean. He was not only a great performer, but look at the uh, look at the Delphonics albums. Take a look at the writer's credits. Mm -hmm. He yeah. wrote or co-wrote a lot of those mm -hmm. songs. Mm -hmm. Yeah, you know, and his brother Will also wrote stuff. And if you're talking about the distinctive, and I tell people the Delphonics, you know, the distinctive first tenor, but I keep telling them that harmony, Will Hart and Randy Kane, and that harmony they have is also distinctive in itself because nobody has harmony that sounds like that. No, no, mm -hmm. exactly. It's, uh, mm -hmm. It was really tight, and it was one of the things mm -hmm. that really uh, gave them the distinctive sound. And, I mean, they're, you know, they're, obviously they were successful on their own, but look at how many groups they influenced that, that copied the, that sound. And, and, and Lamont touched on this also. You know, Blue Magic had the, the falsetto and the stylistics, yeah. of course. I mean, stylistics were really, uh, you know, Russell Tompkins, again, he had a, a very unique voice, too. But, mm -hmm. I mean, they really carried on that sound into, deep into the 70s. Uh, with, with the, the false and then, had, and then you also had Ted Mills from we were talking about earlier from Blue Magic and the three of those those tenors got together on an album the three tenors a soul I think was called the album with Ted Mills and and, and Russell Thomas Jr. and, and yes, William Hart yes yes and I'm honest, thinking, you know that is um that I, I do have that CD uh, somewhere in my collection <laughs> I moved around so much and my collection is a little haphazard but uh, mm -hmm. I, I do have that yeah that was mm -hmm. a great effort uh, about the Oh, I guess I came out about maybe 15, 20 years ago now, right? Right. Yeah. Yeah. So. Yeah. Yeah. It was it? Yeah. It's hard to believe that, that so much time has passed. And, and speaking of time that passed, we talked about I talked about this with Jeff a little earlier, you know. And, and when I, I bring this up because it was such a special moment that that Damon Harris uh, Cancer Foundation benefit, and you attended that event. Um, you know, so many people flew in from the event. You know, when you have people that really appreciate these artists, they'll come from everywhere to support it. You get up close and personal. Tell about your experiences at this event with William Hart. Oh, that was, uh, I, I think I, I echo Jeff's sentiment. That was like a, a, a lifelong dream to meet uh, Damon Harris and, and Will Hart in the same room together. Both great gentlemen, both, you know, took the time to say hello, to talk about their careers. Uh, yeah, I mean, they were just fantastic guys. And Will Hart sounded as good as he ever did uh, performing at that night. So he was really... And I mean, he was a very charitable man. And when you think about all the, the work they did, you know, coming up in the '60s with uh, you know the, the charity concerts they did. I mean, WDAS mm -hmm. and Jerry Bivey would host these shows. There'd be 30, 40 groups, and all the proceeds would go to charities. They would go mm -hmm. to the, you know the United Eagle College Fund, NAACP, the uh, uh, Police Athletic League. Mm -hmm. I mean, these guys really. You know, they they kept the money at home, so to speak. Mm -hmm. You know, I mean, they 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 really gave back to the community, and we'll continue to do that uh, well into you know when 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 we first met him. And I guess it was mm -hmm. the late nineties, early two thousands, mm -hmm. uh, with the Damon Harris strategy. And we're talking to Delphonics. We're paying tribute to William Hart in honor of his recent passing. And my special guest is radio and TV personality Freddie C. Talking to us from Florida on the line. And we're reminiscing about the Damon Harris Cancer Foundation Benefit Concert to support former Temptations lead singer Damon Harris, who's the successor to Eddie Kendricks, and also to spread awareness of prostate cancer for those that are suffering with the illness. And it was William Hart of the Delphonics that came down to help support this particular event, and his group performed that night, as well as Miss Marilyn Marshall, R&B jazz recording artist, who was the chairperson for the event. Damon Harris himself also performed that night. It was a great night, and we're just uh, reflecting on this particular event as we honor the passing of William Hart. This is a photo of myself and Larry Cotton, and I did talk to Larry this week. And uh, it has, you know, Miss Marilyn Marshall, and it has Damon Harris, and it has William Hart in the photo. I'm looking at this photo. I'm like, three of these great singers are gone now, you know? And it's like, it really touched my heart. Just I just kept looking at it and thinking about it that, so many of our greats, we're losing so many of our legends. And it's, I talked to Lamont Chilbert Robinson about this earlier. It's, it's so important to pass this down to the next generation. And you're a lot younger than I am. And, and you know, you, you were the, I mean, when you were a kid, when I first met you, I was actually, we were working at the same radio station. And um, I think I played with Expressway to Your Heart. And, and I heard that honking of that horn. And uh, you said, I can name that in one note or something. And I said, what do you know about this music, kid? <laughs> Remember that? <laughs> That's true, yeah. The uh, police sound brought us together. It really that, did. And that yeah. honking of that horn is what brought us together for over 30 years of friendship and, yeah. and the love of yeah. music. But that's just a testament, Freddie, to tell you how powerful music is. Jerry Blatt was on our show last year, and he talked about 
music is not divisive. Music brings people together. And that's what this music most definitely does. You know, it, it, the sound, the, the harmony, the beautiful arrangements. You know, we talk about Mozart, but Philadelphia, my goodness, the arrangements in, in these songs, the orchestration, beautiful, man. Yeah, it's really true. And, you know, you need no further proof of that than all the people that have covered the song to sample them. I think uh, 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 Notorious B.I.G. had a sample of uh, one of the Delphonic songs on, on, on his records in the 90s. And, uh, you know, the Fugees, of course. I mean, and you, you still hear them pop up in commercials here and there and stuff. It's really just a, a, a testament to the timeless of music. It made, you know, the, the, the popular... Uh, theory might be it's old it's uh, out of the way the uh the commercial fm powerhouse stations don't want to play it because they don't think people care about it anymore but in reality um the the legend lives on as the, the thing says and i mean you can't you you can't deny the the, the quality of, of the music that these groups put out especially the Delphonics. i mean some of those songs they had they had uh i think about 10 not 40 hits in the span of like two and a half years. I mean, that's that's unheard of. You know, that, that those mm -hmm. are astronomical numbers, even for the 60s. I mean, that, that was some really, you know, powerful stuff they put down. What people don't understand, Fred, is we didn't have the MTVs. We didn't have the Facebooks. We didn't have the social networking. We didn't have all of these ways to get this out. These acts had to go on the road, you know, five, six, seven, some of them 10 shows a day, a breakfast show and a lunch show, you know, what, whatever it was. They had to go out and travel, do record hops, you know, Butterball. All these people did these record hops, you know. And, and uh, you know, my cousin Bobby J, was, who works, you know, in New York at their radio station, talked about this also. Um, you know, they had to travel around uh, and get out there. It wasn't no other, you know, it wasn't no MTV. It was no videos, no music videos. It was all them and their performances, you know. It's it's true. It'd be they the played their one nighters, and it would be mm -hmm. like you say, record hops. They might be mm -hmm. doing a you know high school gym one night, uh, you know maybe one of the the, the, the supper clubs the next night, uh, you know, and if it, eventually they would work their way up to the TV shows. I was, you know, and it was a different era, man. You had uh, every local station, well, every city I should say had a local DJ that had a TV show, at least mm -hmm. one. I mean, we had about five. Georgie Woods, oh, Georgie Woods, the man you with know, the Highland, mm -hmm. and Georgie Woods, and yeah. they would bring the groups on. Mm -hmm. and most of them would lip sync, but uh, I mean, I remember Georgie Woods had a late night show, I think Saturday or Sunday nights. So my dad would say, let mm -hmm. me stay and watch that. And I remember uh, seeing groups like the Delphonics and the Tramps on that. I, I, I remember being wowed by the Tramps. They had these, like, the shiniest suit I ever saw, man. It was like a silver, you know, suit that was really a, a, a great memory. But you're, you're right; it was it was a different time. It's not mm -hmm. the uh, social media promotion. They didn't they didn't drop the song on Twitter first. I mean, you had you know they released the record. They they shipped it to the stations. They went out on the road and they worked their butts off promoting it. Uh, mm -hmm. You know, from, from town to town, and mm -hmm. uh, you know the 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 strongest ones made the cut, obviously, and the Delphines were one of those groups that, that mm -hmm. really did. Jocko Henderson had a lot, of, a lot of his shows, too. I guess he was in Philly and New York, wasn't he, Jocko? Oh, yeah, yeah, he was another mm -hmm. one that uh, mm -hmm. you know, really um, mm -hmm. instrumental uh, in uh, a, lot of, a lot of careers early on, mm -hmm. him and Jimmy Bishop, of mm -hmm. course. Jimmy Bishop. He, he had uh, the Arctic label. And, mm -hmm. um, then we had Harvey Holiday. Uh, Don't forget Harvey Holiday. Now, he used to throw, throw down, Har you know. Harvey's a great guy. One of all-time uh, greats. One of you know? my Facebook friends. We we still talk occasionally on mm -hmm. air. He's a, mm -hmm. yeah, he, he kept the sound alive for, yes, for a number did. of years. Yes, he did. He really did his thing, I, you know. You know. Yeah, as uh, as you're doing and as some well, other uh, we, folks are know, doing on the internet. We want to recognize my good friend Larry Cotter. We talked to Larry uh, yesterday. And he's doing his thing. And I hope to get Larry back uh, to come on and do some guest spots here on the show because he's got a lot of information I know to share with us. But uh, I want to send a shout-out to him and, and Mrs. Cotton and that family uh, over across the bridge. And, uh, of course, we do send condolences again to the Hart family, William Hart's uh, family, uh, his wife, uh, Pamela Hart, and the children, and uh, our good friend Will Hart, uh, who also was very supportive at some of our events for the Hold On Education Foundation. Yeah. Yeah, he he, yeah, he definitely gave his time, mm -hmm. gave back to the community, and uh, mm -hmm. a lot of a lot of great uh, charities like the Game of Harris. Yeah. Uh, yeah. It was uh, a great, uh, it was a great, and that was a great event. Mm -hmm. I mean, you you did 
you you worked your butt off on that. Yeah, that was uh, something. <laughs> That's a whole book and a story <laughs> and, to tell uh, on that one. I but, think you know. I think a lot of people, and you know, to this day, of course, you know, a lot of people appreciated that. Yeah. Something. Uh, what yeah, gave it's fan, it's like, like we said, it gave fans, true fans of the group, you know, a chance to be up close and personal with the legends themselves, to hear them tell their stories and then perform. And then after the performance, we danced and had fun. You know, it was just a fun night. A good camaraderie is just people having a great time, and that's really what it was. And that one, that's what makes it fun, you know what I mean? And that's what and we you know, did. that's why I, it's I so memorable. That, I think a lot of that's missing in today's mm-hmm. uh, society. I think yeah. I mean, maybe not so much. You, you do have some some sports uh, stars that do get back to the community and are out there in their communities and stuff, um, but you know, you don't have the accessibility that you had mm-hmm. years ago. Uh, you know, these guys would stay and talk to the fans and sign mm-hmm. autographs and stuff like that. A lot, a lot of today's artists, mm-hmm. they don't the do that. They're things. managed, you know, they got managers and they're, they're bodyguards and mm-hmm. stuff. They got to you know, get on to this and that, and whatever. Mm-hmm. And they're not contracted to do this, that, mm-hmm. or whatever. You know, the, 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 the legends, you know, that we're talking about, they never cared about that. Will no, Hart never cared. He, no. He'd stay in sign an autograph. He'd stay and talk about, you know. Both the uh, brothers, yeah. I mean, mm-hmm. you know, he, mm-hmm. he, he would enjoy doing that, and, and a lot of them did. And, and I remember uh, at that event, you know, my, my and Jeff also bought, I think, I don't know if it was you or Jeff, that bought some couple of the 45s. Um, that the guys had, and they were surprised to see. You know, you never know with the, with the fans what they have, but they were surprised to see those rare forty fives and things. They autographed them for us, and you know, it's just a great time. You know, yeah, yeah, good good stuff. I'm so honored to meet him, and I'm I'm so happy. Uh, you know that that you know we had were able to you know honor him and honor Damon at, at the, the same night. There, it was mm-hmm. really a that that great was, effort. That was. You know, those two great voices, yeah. and they, they sang that night too. I'm telling you. <laughs> Mm-hmm. Yeah. yeah. So, okay, well, Fred, you know, like I said, we could go on and on and on, but, you know, we just want to, you know, take this opportunity to pay tribute to William Pooji Hart of the Delphonics. We're going to continue to play some more songs, and uh, I'm glad that, uh, and I, I've got to mention, I want to thank you for letting me know, because I, you, I think you had uh, contacted me in the wee hours of the morning about this, about his passing, you know, and I looked into it, I said, wow, it really just took my heart, man. Yeah, that's the the one. I'll say the one good thing about social media is it does keep you connected with with some mm-hmm. folks. And uh, you know, there were there were some people in the know mm-hmm. um, that I, that I trusted uh, that were uh, mm-hmm. posting about uh, uh, William's un- unfortunate passing. Mm-hmm. And uh, I, you, you were the first person I thought of when I I, thought, I was like, oh, okay, well, if Tim doesn't know, he needs to know because you know mm-hmm. he's the guy keeping the sound alive in Philly. So. Right. I, well, you know, we we but, we try, you know, to do that, and we don't like to put information out unless we hear, you know, from the family or or, or reliable, right. credible source, you know. Sure, and, sure. Uh, you know, but you know, Will Hart is still out there keeping the sound alive with his group. They're fantastic. I was telling a couple of the guys earlier that we, I got the chance to see his group about a month or so ago, and they're still doing their thing. They're awesome. So you know, get yeah, a chance, great. support the artist. You know, support all of these uh, classic R and B artists uh, from back in the day, and you know. Help us keep the sound alive, you know. Help us do this thing. Yep. You know what I mean, Fred? <laughs> Absolutely, so. yeah. Got got to support them while while you still can, because yeah. you know, like you say, we're every day you 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 know you open Reading, up the you know. the web or the newspaper or whatever, and then and another one unfortunately passes away. That's just where we are in our generation, you know. Mm-hmm. Is that period of time? All right, Fred. Uh, say hello to Sherry C for me, your beautiful wife. Yeah, and. Yeah. I want you to make a request now. You you have a request from the Delphonics that you want to hear. Yeah, I'd love to hear Hey Love. Hey Love. I think Will Hart wrote this and sings lead on this track. This might have been one of the songs that was sampled uh, from one of the uh, hip-hop recording artists. But let's take a listen to Hey Love from the Delphonics. It's in honor of William Hart of the Delphonics and uh, our spotlight artist here on the R&B Showcase. And Freddie C., I can't remember. I never can remember the TV station. Where are you at now? Buddy, <laughs> <laughs> Spectrum Bay News Nine in uh, Tampa, Florida. All We're right. online if you want to check it out. <laughs> yes, yes, dear. I'll check it out, and uh, hopefully, you guys do something on them as well. That'd be great. <laughs> yeah. All right, Fred. Thanks for tuning in to the R and B Showcase. Give my best to the family, and here is your request from the Delphonics: "It's Hey Love" on the R and B Showcase. A group that was heavily influenced by the Delphonics and Randy Kane is the New Kids on the Block. And the New Kids on the Block are back on tour uh, with a reunion concert. And we're on the line right now with their lead singer, Jordan Knight, as part of our honor and tribute to Delphonics. Jordan, you recorded a Delphonic song, Didn't I Blow Your Mind This Time? And in fact, uh, William Hart was very complimentary uh, of your cover. 
met uh, William Hart. He came to uh, a couple studio sessions of ours when we were touring uh, in Philadelphia. We he came to the uh, one of our sessions, mm-hmm. and uh, he he had also you know it was great to meet him mm-hmm. um, because you know we did uh, one of his songs over and. He worked with Tom Bell, who uh, wrote songs for the Stylistics, um, and uh, he was really he was he was really pushing uh, "La La I Love You" uh-huh. to do that one. That one was big for us. Mm-hmm. To do that one, but um, it was you know just to just to listen to those guys and then be able to meet them is uh, mm-hmm. something really special. That'd be fantastic. Yeah, especially especially when they give you great comments. Like yeah, that. yeah. Well, mm-hmm. you know, we we did a we did a uh, benefit not too long ago. We had William Hart, the Delphonics. We had a couple of up and coming acts. It was kind of great, to, great to try to get the up and coming groups together with the with the legendary groups and try to do things together. That's and uh, nice. it yeah. was it was just fantastic. But um, we got a couple of requests for that track. So if you don't mind, I'm gonna go into that. Okay. Do not blow your mind this time. A huge hit. Also, the Grammy winner for the Delphonics. And this is a segment we're going to go into right now called The Best of the R&B Showcase with some vintage classic interviews. And this is in honor of the life and legacy of William Hart of the Delphonics, who passed recently. And we're going to feature some classic interviews that we did with William Hart. There were quite a few. He was on our show a number of times. And this is one of the uh, interviews. This was shortly after the passing of group member Randy Kane. Remember the original trio of the Delphonics, the hit-making trio, included William Hart, his brother Will Hart, and Randy Kane. And uh, Will Hart is the last surviving original founding member of the group still actively performing. So the next few interviews you're going to hear are going to be of that of William Hart, and then his brother, Will Hart, will also be featured in a special classic R&B showcase interview. Also joining me for these special interviews is my longtime co-host, Mr. Larry Cotton, UK journalist and international music correspondent, with uh, In the Basement magazine, and he will be my co-host for the next couple of interviews that you hear featured today. Once again, this is all in honor of the legacy of William Hart and the Delphonics. We have another guest on the line. We have another legend on the line, as a matter of fact, talking about the Delphonics, who were recently inducted into the Rhythm and Blues Hall of Fame, Grammy Award-winning Delphonics. Let me clarify that. Go ahead. I meant to say legend. All right, now. The food just straight me up for yeah, sure. Um, you know that's right. <laughs> it was the power trio of William Hart, Wilbur Hart, and Randy Kane formed the Delphonics back in the 1960s. And Delphonics are the group who defined the soft soul sound of Philly with signature hits like La La Means I Love You and the Grammy Award winning Did Not Blow Your Mind This Time. Welcome, William Hart. Hello. Oh, man. I'm glad, glad to be on the phone with you. How you doing, Tim? I'm doing well, man. And uh, yeah. Mary Cotton, how you doing, my brother? All right there, Poochie. Uh, let me tell you, man, it was one beautiful, beautiful um, send-off for my best friend, you know? Randy was my best friend and is my best friend because I can't even conceive as we speak him being gone. Mm. Uh, it, uh, it's, it's real hard for me because... I remember when we were younger, 10, 11 years old, before we had wives, children, or anything, when we would, you know, get a popsy, a popsicle, and we would always share things, you know what I mean. You know how the half these things went when you had a popsicle and you break the popsicle in half? (laughs) (laughs) And those were wonderful days, man. We lived in a community, man, where... All of the people were like one big family, you know what I mean? If your mother saw me doing something bad, I'd get a whooping and all. Mm-hmm. And uh, it was it was basically almost like heaven, man. You know, the condition was wonderful. We was having a lot of fun. Uh, the music was always, always clean by all the artists that we heard, like, you know, the Flamingos and... Um, Moonglows. Moonglows and, you know... And on and on and on. I mean, I mean, the Drifters and, you know, Johnny Matthews and, you know, Sammy Davis Jr., Frank Sinatra, all the beautiful music. Barbara Streisand, Rita Franklin, I mean, Patti LaBelle, all the great, beautiful music. We came along at that time, you know? Uh, and, um, I really miss Randy, man. I'm telling you, I was around the house today looking at uh, pictures, you know, and I, and I saw a picture of, of 
of him and that I have of him and his son, you know, uh, man, and, uh, and it just knocked me down again, you know. Mm-hmm. I come back in the house. I was across the street when you called earlier, Tim. Mm-hmm. I was trying to fight a, um, uh, what do you call him? A raccoon. A big <laughs> raccoon was in my yard. <laughs> this raccoon was fighting back. So, you know, I was the only one in the yard with him, right? Uh-huh. <laughs> and I, this thing, he was going up the tree, coming down and coming back up. I said, oh, this is a war. <laughs> and right when you called me, if you knew I was breathing hard. Yeah, I know. <laughs> <laughs> I said, oh, my goodness, man, I'm getting ready to be attacked by a raccoon. I said, if that's Randy, if, it, if that's you messing with me, man, you, you know, he always made me laugh, always played Oh, gosh, you know. that's too funny. Oh, that's too much. <laughs> but I, I, I tell you, man, I mean, uh, I miss laughing and joking and, and yeah. um, you know, being on the road. And I tell you, man, I, I would like to say this to, to the fans and, 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 and his family mm-hmm. that, in the last part of his life, he was so, so happy. It all started when we did the PBS special. Uh, Carl Randy said, come on, man, you can do it. And um, he came and we rehearsed and, uh, and you know, he was moving, you know, kind of slow because Randy wasn't well, well, you know. Mm-hmm. And, and uh, then... It, you know, the more he was around us and the more he was around the rehearsal, he got better and better and better. And then it was like a burst of light. It was He was his old self again, man. I'm telling you, I mm. was looking forward. He was looking forward to looking to doing this PBS special together. He was looking forward to that. And um, I had just spoken to him. Oh, uh, what day did I speak to him? I spoke to him, oh, whoa, 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 that's Monday, Tuesday, and then I didn't talk to him again to Tuesday, and after Tuesday, I didn't talk to him at all again. I, he was all happy. I said, you ready for the show, man? He said, yeah, man, I'm ready for the show, <laughs> ready to go, man. I mean, his spirit was 100% like it was. When we started, when we get, got on that stage, mm-hmm. as though as though he, Randy was real strong. Mm-hmm. I want you to know that he was real, real. I'm talking about mentally and physically strong. Everything what God gave him was all right with him. Mm-hmm. You know, he 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 wasn't, um, you know, never complaining about uh, uh, anything. Mm-hmm. You know, and um, it was just a—he's just a beautiful person, man. And I know that most, when most people pass, you 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 find the most beautiful things that you can say about the person. But of course, we all had our faults, we had our ups, and we had our downs. But that had nothing to do with the absolute love that we had for one another. You know, and I miss him, and I miss him dearly. And um, I know I'll. I'll see him again. Mm. You know, he's a good man. He's a real good man. Well, you know, I tell you, son, I his son spoke so well mm-hmm. and elegant yesterday. Yes, uh, about him. You know, I mean, uh, he's he's just like Randy. He's strong, mm-hmm. strong. I, I was looking at the strength mm-hmm. and how he fought back his tears, mm-hmm. and he went on and talked and put a smile on the people's face. Mm-hmm. Lord Randy, if you hear me, man, I love you, man. He's you listening. A hell of a job. Oh, yeah. He's listening. He's, they're, they're all listening tonight. And, uh, and you know, uh, Pooh, you right before you came on, we just uh, interviewed him. I mean, he, he was powerful again tonight. Mm-hmm. Very well, profound. You know, oh, you he, did? He, oh, mm-hmm. Yeah, he came mm-hmm. on strong. Oh, mm-hmm. man. He, He's he listening to you. Else. He mm-hmm. hear you. Great speaker, too. Yes, yeah. he is. Yes, indeed. And great, great, mm-hmm. great, 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 great. He handles the crowd. Well, he got that from his father that, because his father, you look at his father on stage, you can see the um, the proudness that he presents. There was never no shyness in Randy mm-hmm. when it came to people, you know. And um, I miss him, man. I, I man, I miss him. I, I'm telling you, I miss him so much that it chokes me up to talk, mm-hmm. uh, especially now because you know I we had so many plans to. Just go forward, and I seen health coming back in him, and then all of a sudden, boom, mm-hmm. man, you man, it knocked me out. 
But you, you know. but you know, I tell you, I, I, when I think about the group, Randy now, yeah, I think about the Bogata. Mm -hmm. When y'all taped that uh, Love Train special, mm -hmm. yeah, he, he was strong. Mm -hmm. He had a big smile on his face. Yeah. I mean, he was into it. Yes, he was. Y'all came out with you, man. It, it was like the the, the, the it, it gave him energy, mm -hmm. and that's what he needed. Mm -hmm. What show? Mm -hmm. It definitely showed. Yeah, y'all, yeah. you, you always styling with them capes, though, Poochie. Yeah. Oh, yeah, <laughs> yeah, it was sharp now. <laughs> and, and and one thing, and and the look on his face mm -hmm. was like so much youth was there. Mm -hmm. You know, just like the good old days, man. Just like the good old days, man. And you know, Randy, he lit up at the uh, Kimball Center, too, when y'all got inducted to the Rhythm of Loose Foundation. Mm -hmm. Yeah, and, 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 and we're getting ready now to be inducted into the Rock and Roll Hall of Fame, by the way. That's right. Actually. Yeah, you tell me. Tell us so, about it. Uh -huh. So we need all the extra votes we can get. Mm -hmm. Well, we're going to do our best to, uh, to uh, get that going, man. Yes, please. And, 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 and uh, Randy wanted to, 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 to see that day. I mean, we had plans, man. We had mm -hmm. plans. I mean, it's like everything just shut down tonight. Mm -hmm. You're listening to the best of the R&B showcase, honoring the life and legacy of William Hart of the Delphonics. Tonight's show's in tribute to the Delphonics, and we've got William Hart on the line, the songwriter and the gentleman who helped put the group together. Tell us about the early years of Delphonics. You all came together. I know you went to Overbrook High School. Um, yeah. Where'd the name Delphonics come from? Well, it's a long, long story. First, first of all, um, it was the Orphonics. Okay. And then, well, no, no. First of all, let's go all the way back. First of all, it was uh, Little Heart and Everglows. <laughs> that was me. Little, little Heart, I was short. And then it was uh, the Veltones. And if you watch the Tim stories, you remember how many names they had first before they got the right one. Mm. And then it was the Four Guys. Then it was the Orphonics. Then it became the Dolphonics. And out of all those people, the remaining guys was my brother Wilbur. Randy and myself, and we went across the world from one end of the earth to the other, together, young men, you know, uh, I'm a young writer, and, you know, just learning about, you know, how to even get paid as a singer, they wouldn't tell us back in those days how to get paid as a writer, but um, I've, 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 I've learned now, and it's all all behind me, all the bad things, all the good things are in front of me. Poojie, how did you get hooked up with uh, Tom Bell? Uh, Stan Watson hooked me up with Tom Bell. Stan Watson came to a barber shop uh, where I was, and I, you know, I was writing songs long before I met Stan Watson, and and, and he would come in his barber shop and hear this young guy back there with a guitar playing and playing and singing. Every time, then he came back and said, "Man, uh, why don't you record?" I, I never even thought of recording, mm -hmm. you know. And uh, he, he said, I'm going to take you somewhere. After after the barbershop closed, you know, he took me home. Then the following day, he came and picked me up, took me down 309, which at that particular time it was called, it was called, oh, God, what was it called down there? I knew Moonshot Records was there. Cameo Parkway. Okay. Cameo Parkway. In Broad Street, you mean? Oh, Tommy so Bell was, the, was the A&R uh, person down Tom, okay. uh, down Cameo Parkway. Uh, well, Tom Bell had never, you know, he wasn't famous and never had a hit. None of us were, you know. And when he and I got together with the songs I was writing and the music that he was putting behind it, it was an instant hit. Mm. And the Delphines was off and running. Now, who uh, picked their clothes? Because y'all always uh, were sharp on stage. I always had a... Uh, yeah, that was always dressed to kill. Who uh, was responsible for the uh, wardrobe? Huh? Who, Who did your your, your costumes? The wardrobe, the costumes, stage costumes. Who did the costumes, man? Oh, oh, the wardrobe. Oh, oh yeah. the wardrobe. Yeah. <laughs> oh, the wardrobe. Yes, indeed. That's a big secret. I I can't tell that secret. Okay. Not Over the night, huh? <laughs> All right. All I know is they come. Uh, <laughs> the garments come from Paris. Oh wow. wow. Hmm. Yeah. Very distinguished, man. And, and I, uh, you know. 
you know, me, me myself being an artist, I, you know, I tell them what I need, and it comes back almost exactly. Mm -hmm. So, you know? when is your next engagement? Or you performing next? I know you. I know. I know you're going to. Uh, you, you're touring with the um, the Love Train tour. The Love Train tour. Yes. Yes. The next the, the next performance will be uh, July 10th in Los Angeles, California. Okay. And the July 11th in uh, uh, Concord, California. Okay. July 12th in in Anaheim, California. And then we'll be in, we'll be on the 17th in Atlantic City. That's close by. Oh wow! Okay. At the Bagada. Okay. The Soul Train show going kick it off back there again. Okay. And you also have the man coming up too, right? The man. Uh, yeah, the man. Okay. Then we have also the uh, Foxwood and wow. Detroit. Okay. We have we got a lot of work. We were all we, Randy and I. We we're really looking forward to bringing forth together, man. Mm -hmm. Tim Marshall on the R&B Showcase honoring the life and legacy of William Hart of the Delphonics. Going to feature some of his solo tracks and continue with the classic interviews. And what about the one that uh, Pooja did with the Intruders? Oh, boy. That was, man. Remember that one? Yeah, I got that somewhere here. Mm -hmm. I'm going to see if I can dig that out for you. But that was a great now, track. Now, did you play too. that stuff for Randy too, uh, Pooja, when y'all got back together? Uh-huh. Yeah. Uh-oh. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> uh, man, man, we was ready to we'll go, man. We was ready to rock. I hear you. Mm-hmm. They're playing a lot of this stuff on, over in England, by the way, because yes, they're coming back to this music again. Mm -hmm. So I'm going to be ready. That's the, tell us about the, the song. Now, I know a lot of people are not familiar. That roster man uh, featured Little Sonny the Intruders. Tell us about that recording, man. Oh, that's the last song Sonny ever sang. It's the last song that he, mm -hmm. uh, and he sang it with me and I mm -hmm. sang it with him. We always wanted to do a song together. Mm -hmm. And right after we did that song together... Sonny, you know, Sonny passed away. Right. You know? But it was something that was it was something that was meant to be. Yeah. Where was that recorded at? Uh we, we recorded that Rasta Man, we recorded that in my studio. Mm hmm Yeah, and and um we did it very well. It came off beautiful, man, mm -hmm. you know? Mm hmm Uh uh Do you have that record too? Is this it? You have it there? I got it right here. Let's take a listen to it. Also features Little Sonny of the Intruders as we close out this very special tribute honoring the life and legacy of Mr. William Fuji Hart. We're going to leave you now with a very special interview with Wilbert Hart, the last surviving original co-founder of the Delphonics. Together with William Hart, his brother, and Randy Kane, they were the original trio and later Major Harris joined the group and they put out some of the greatest music in American popular music history. Our tribute to the Delphonics on the R&B Showcase. And on the line right now from Willingboro, New Jersey, is Mr. Wilbert Hart. And we'll, uh, we're going to ask you to give us a little bit of insight uh, on the early years uh, with the Delphonics and the power trio of William Hart, Will Hart, and Randy Kane. Give us some, a little bit more background on the, uh, the Delphonics. Well, in the beginning, you know, it was... You know, there was plenty of groups out of West Philadelphia, you know, and everybody was working, you know. In fact, we had, like, our brother group was in shooters, you know, because they were, like, recording, and we were, like, getting ready to record. And, uh, and you know, uh, there were so many groups in Philly, escorts, and and uh, you're very lucky to, we were very lucky to, to end up working with Tommy Bell, because Tommy Bell did something for us that nobody else was actually doing and gave us that sound that 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 philadelphia orchestra sound you know that big you know arrangement big production and this is what kind of like made us kind of pop out a little bit that he don't really love you thing and kettle drums and and uh you know and this is at our beginning you know he don't really love you then we came with uh you've been untrue you've been untrue mm -hmm. you know better than me no well you know <laughs> i was into it and i'm, I'm still into y'all yeah. and uh it was just such a a, a, a new sound and a uh, 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 unique sound, you know, and mm -hmm. um, and then y'all had uh, your own style on stage. Mm -hmm. It, it yeah, always was, was sharp. That was, uh, that was something that I worked hard on that, really, because that was kind of like my job to take care of uh, the wardrobe, the wardrobe, and the steps and mm -hmm. the persona, kind of like on stage. That was kind of like my job. Mm -hmm. And y'all still and sharp on stage. Mm -hmm. <laughs> mm -hmm. Say it again. Y'all still dress nice mm -hmm. on stage. Y'all yeah. stay sharp. Yes, mm -hmm. yes, we, we try to. You better, you know. Immaculately dressed, and then you'll have a unique sound. Even it's just, it's just a trio, but you have such a unique sound with your harmony. Yeah, thank you. Yeah, well, this is something. This is also the way Tommy structured the music. You know, is 
and then we had three voices and uh so you know the, the production was based on three voices so we had to use different harmonies at different times and it was you know that's the reason that we have a different sound here on the radio mm -hmm. well you do have a great sound and uh you also have one that's a grammy winner tell us about didn't i blow your mind didn't this i time. blow your mind yeah we won the grammy for uh best performance mm -hmm. uh, r&b act and uh, that was that was big you know because we you know was up against all these Temptations and you know, everybody who was who was who we thought was great singers mm -hmm. you know what I'm saying? to get that award that was that was real big you know it was uh, you know that was that, we were blessed because there's so much talent in Philadelphia mm -hmm. man and in the area we you know we were just blessed to mm -hmm. be surrounded with the right people to make it happen.